Now, let's apply the divergence test to this sequence. Okay. If it proves that it diverges, we're going to state that it does, it diverges. Otherwise, indicate that it's inconclusive because it doesn't give us any information if it doesn't go to zero. All right, so the limit, limit as n goes to infinity of n over 3n minus 1, that corresponding sequence, that limit is going to be one third. So that means, therefore, the sum from 1 to infinity of n over 3n minus 1 diverges. Fantastic news if that's the case. We now know something. We know that it diverges. All right. Next example, we have the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. All right. Well, let's take the limit. Series just make me excited. I keep writing too fast. The limit of 1 over n cubed is 0. Now, looking back at that, it says if the limit is some number that is not 0, then it diverges. So we don't know. The divergence test is inconclusive. Now, that really is not much of an answer. That means, just like um, with medical procedures and anything else, that means we need to look a little closer. We need to take a second look, get another opinion. Okay, so there are lots of tests in this chapter from, uh, te from uh, section 3 to section 6 that will come in very useful. So, just because this one doesn't work does not mean it doesn't converge or doesn't diverge. We just don't know yet. All right, let's apply that to 28. Well, if I take the limit of e to the 1 over n squared. Well, this exponent is going to 0, so this is approaching 1. Therefore, n equals 1 to infinity of e to the 1 over n squared diverges. Next, we have number 29. Applying the divergence test to this, so let's find the limit of cosine of 1 over n squared. Again, cosine is continuous just like the exponential function is. So this is going to 0, which means that our limit is 1. Therefore, that series, cosine of 1 over n squared, diverges because it is not zero.